time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very important topic when sharing our faith with scientifically minded people is my colleague, astrophysicist, Dr. Jeff Swearing. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Krista. Good to be here today. So let's talk a little bit about the multiverse. Um, that might even be a new term for some people. So let's start with a definition so everyone knows what we're talking about here. What is the multiverse? That's a really good question to start. And the, the way I think about it, and there's not a single definition of it, but to talk about a multiverse, we first have to define a universe, you know, a one as opposed to multiple. And so the way I look at it, the, the thing that we know exists is every, all the space, time, matter, and energy that is capable of having communicated with the earth. And so uh, kind of one, one way, one really objective way to think about that is to say, all right, we've got the earth, the universe is roughly 14 billion years old, the speed of light, through space is a constant. So we could just ask, what is the farthest reach of space where light could have propagated to the earth? And, you know, that makes a very large volume of, of space, you know, something about, uh, you know, close to 100 billion light years across. But we can define, if we define that as the universe, or at least the observable universe, the multiverse is just anything beyond that. And that could be just a whole lot more of the same space time, you know, stuff that if we were transported to the edge of that observable universe, it would largely look the same. Or it could mean entirely other uh, bubbles where the laws of physics might be different or entirely different realms. And so there's lots of different ways to think about it. But basically, it's just anything beyond the observable universe. That's really helpful. Um, now, I'm wondering then, because I'm seeing this, this topic pop up more and more in my social media, especially among my friends who are scientifically minded people. Um, why do you think it's important for Christians to at least be a little bit conversant about the multiverse? Well, I think it's important to be conversant about the multiverse because there's a pretty good chance that we live in some form of multiverse. Um, so scientifically, it's a well-motivated idea. And if we're going to engage questions of the beginning of the universe or design and fine tuning for a purpose, we need to be aware that the multiverse addresses those issues or impacts those issues in a way that we need to be conversant about. So if we just say, well, you know, Big Bang, that's the beginning of the universe, that's the end of the story, people are going to come back like they did to me when I was uh, talking about this originally and say, well, what about the multiverse? And if you're not if you haven't thought about the idea, the conversation is just going to stop there. And so I, I think it's important for Christians to at least be aware of how the multiverse impacts those ideas for a beginning and the ideas for design in a way and, and the scientific motivation so that you can converse with people who think that's a good explanation for things. And when we're talking about conversing with them, I what immediately jumps to my mind is if I have somebody in my friend group or my family that I'm trying to share my faith with who's scientifically minded. This is a topic that very easily could could come up. So I'm going to want to think a little bit about it. That, that makes me wonder, what is the validity to the claim that a multiverse exists? I mean, because you said earlier that you think that we probably live in some version of a multiverse. I guess in my mind, I was thinking this is just some sort of atheist loophole to get around evidence for a creator. So help me understand, you know, how solid is this idea? You know, that, that's a, an interesting uh, topic to discuss, because I think there are probably people who use this as a loophole to get around discussing or having to think about the need for a God. But the reality of it is there's scientifically interesting motivations for thinking about a multiverse. Uh, and, you know, not going into all of the details, getting down into the weeds, but we talk about Big Bang cosmology. Well, Big Bang cosmology is incomplete because it doesn't explain why our universe is so flat, uh, why it's so homogeneous, um, why the temperature is all the same everywhere. Um, and so one of the good ways to explain all that is to have this inflationary epoch very early in the universe. Well, as scientists have tried to understand what inflation does and how it works, uh, really a, a very generic way to say it is that if inflation happened, 
our universe or, or what exists is far larger than the observable universe. So part of the way inflation insolves uh, these homogeneity and uh, isotropy problems is by basically just saying that the, the very early universe very rapidly grew. And so it's much larger than what we can see. So that idea of a multiverse really kind of comes in just because of inflationary cosmology, that being the dominant idea of, that describes the dynamics of our universe. And even more so, as we ask the question, how does inflation work? What's the physical mechanism behind it? Most of the physical mechanisms that we can envision behind inflation that actually describe our universe actually produce a universe with a whole lot of other bubble universes out there as well. It produces a multiverse. So uh, scientifically speaking, the idea of a multiverse is a very well motivated idea, even if it's those still speculative and that we can't actually go out and measure the distant regions of space that would be part of the multiverse. Um, so even if we can't actually tangibly measure, there's measurements we can make inside our universe that indicate that we live as part of a multiverse. So when we talk to our scientifically minded friends, the topic of the multiverse comes up. Give me one or two things really briefly that I need to keep in mind. Well, so to me, the existence of the multiverse isn't really the central issue in this discussion as a Christian apologist. Where I see uh, the multiverse way in is how does that impact whether our universe, whether things had a beginning or not? And how does that impact whether things are designed or fine tuned? Um, you know, and, and you could imagine that if we're part of this multiverse where universes are just popping into existence, maybe the multiverse gets rid of a beginning. Well, it turns out there's actually very strong evidence that even inflation had a beginning to it. And so it doesn't look like the multiverse gets around the need for a beginning. It still seems like a multiverse points to a beginning. And it changes the design or fine tuning arguments because uh, a lot of times the fine tuning or design arguments are couched in terms of probabilities. And with probabilities, you have to keep a track of the probability itself, the ratio, if you will, but also the sample size. Well, the multiverse says the sample size grows so large that it almost overcomes any small fractions or small ratios. But yet even inside the multiverse, there's still evidence for design. And I, I don't know that we have time to go into those, but uh, there are some resources on our website uh, that you can get that actually help articulate what are those evidences for design. So really, the key question is not does the multiverse exist, is does it remove the need for a beginning? And I think the answer is no. And does it remove the evidence for design? And I say no, it just kind of changes how we have to articulate it. Well, thanks, Jeff, for helping us get a little bit more up to speed on this important topic. And I'm going to refer people to your book, Escaping the Beginning, as well as Who's Afraid of the Multiverse.